All right, got some super exciting news. So we have a winner in our Cruella de Vil pop vinyl giveaway. And it was a very, very difficult decision. Very. After much <laughs> deliberation and seconds of debate, we have elected to give the Cruella de Vil um, pop vinyl to Matthew and Lauren Vlogs. Um, thank you guys for watching and leaving a comment. Um, we had a lot of views on the video this week. Uh, we've been getting a lot of views over the last few weeks in particular. However, we've got um, the one comment. So there you go. Made our decision easy. But, um, you know, we, I'm joking. Well, I'm not joking. There really was one comment. But um, we appreciate you guys listening even if you don't leave a comment and we get a lot of likes and things like that but uh congratulations to matthew and lauren vlogs we will get in touch with you and get you that cruella de vil um as soon as possible also real quick here in the opening i would like to thank my mother-in-law for getting me the snazzy little quick dis takes uh i guess what would you call this a, a drinking yeah, it's a drinking Tom, cup but uh, it's basically a cup um, um, very cool. It's got our banner on there, and um, pretty neat. Can't wait to use it. Anyway, that's all I got for a cold opening here. Uh, let's get on with the show. Good afternoon, everyone, or night, or whenever you're listening to this. Um, this is Quick Diz Takes Podcast, episode 23, and uh, today I'd just like to say thank you once again. I know we've been doing this a lot lately, but uh, we've had a, a spike in subscribers um, and viewers of late, so just want to say thank you again for all the support, and uh, I just believe we saw, I just looked, it was 2,344 subs now, I believe it is. Um, way beyond anything I could have possibly have hoped for. Um, so really, really appreciate that and thank you for that. Um, I've been really busy with work and stuff like that lately, so didn't have much time to put any kind of like, well, I never really do show notes, but I usually give Johnny like some kind of a heads up on like what we're going to actually talk about today. Um, didn't do that, but, um, luckily I was listening to another podcast in the car and, um, a story kind of came across that uh, I thought would be an interesting discussion for today, um, and hopefully it carries a good conversation. And that was, um, I don't know if you saw Johnny, but um, a woman was arrested yeah. at yeah. Hollywood Studios, and by your smile, judging by your smile, I can tell yeah, that you know yeah. what I'm talking about, because allegedly, I will use the word allegedly, even though it's pretty, I think it's pretty blatantly. Obvious that she, this is all true, that she was um, quite inebriated and was looking for um, a cigarette. And when she asked the cab driver if he had a cigarette, he um, politely explained to her that he was not a smoker and did not. And long story short, she threw a temper tantrum to the point where she needed to get thrown out of the parking lot and banned from Disney for life. Despite the fact that I heard a follow-up story that she was at a Disney Springs restaurant two days later on her Instagram. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Hopefully maybe we'll see her when we're down on our trip. But I'm using that to segue into the idea of, oh, this idea kind of came up when I heard that is where, um, and, and let's couple this together with the childless millennial conversation that was kind of a hot topic about three or four weeks back where exactly is disney's demographic now is where i'm getting at it it's family right mm, yes. we're led to believe yes okay but people are getting <laughs> opportunities to get fairly wasted you know to put it in layman's terms, in these parks now, um, it's trickled down. I mean, even Magic Kingdom is slowly presenting the opportunities now. Um, you know what's coming. I mean, you can sit, you can get it at sit-down restaurants, and I don't think booths outside vendors yet. 
At least I didn't see it on my no, chat. No, I don't think so. Not there. But I'm sure it's coming. Point being, when that does come, or what already is there as far as the other three parks, are Childish Millennials really what Disney's shooting, shooting for now? Or is it both? Or is it, I guess, I guess anyone they can make money on, but where do you feel, do you feel like they're getting, I guess the question of the day is, I'm trying to make a nice broad question is, are they getting to the point, are they getting to like the line now? Like where are they going to draw this line where, you know, on a festival night, which is as pointed out by the podcast I was listening to earlier, pretty much every night of the year now at Epcot, on a Friday or Saturday night, people are showing up to these parks with the intentions. You even see the shirts and everything of having themselves quite a few cocktails. And don't get me wrong, we're both guilty as charged. Although I don't, I like to believe I never acted like a complete fool. No. Um, but <laughs> people do, and it could happen to anyone if they go past a certain point. Where does Disney draw the line? Or is it time to draw the line to where you got to say, well, we got families in here and people that we want to have a good time with these festivals. What is a, what is a good mix? Or how can we maybe maybe even a couple of ideas on how we can create a mix? You want to please both sides, whereas you may have, you can use the, more adult things like the, the you know the drinking in the bars and whatever for say there's those those families that have you know the you got uh, the, the the mother is very into disney the father doesn't want to doesn't care for disney but wants to appease you know the wife and kids or whatever and he can use that well, there's these adult things I can still do and be in this Disney bubble. Uh, well, not be in like that. I mean, Disney bubble, like the being in the Disney. Like he he can have his fun while his the rest of his family is is doing that. So they're trying to appease maybe an outside a, 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 somebody who's outside the 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 Disney thing that's not into it, but still can have fun. Well, it, it, you know, and because maybe that's why they don't have it as much at Magic Kingdom, because Magic Kingdom is uh, is more towards that that the Disney part. It's uh, but then you get like you're saying with the the festivals, you don't have to. It, those can have nothing to do with Disney. It's just going basically just to have a good time, and you know, you're doing your drinking and eating. So I I, I don't really, I know they take. They take the summer off with the festival. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you're kind of getting more, because I usually go in the summer, so I usually see the more family. So I've I've never, I don't think I've ever really seen a, a really intoxicated person in the times I go. But then I don't go the I've never been to a festival, so I don't know what that situation is. But I, I don't I don't really know that where the line. The, it's just very. Because in the end, it's a business, and it's, mm -hmm. they're making money like crazy with what they're doing. But then, you get these these situations of people getting arrested. I, I don't know if <laughs> did alcohol have anything to do with that one in Disneyland, where well, the family was like, F I don't, I didn't hear anything. I, I didn't hear anything saying that. But, uh, as a matter, is Disneyland even have alcohol? I don't think you can get alcohol in Disneyland. Not Disney. Oh yeah, yeah, because that was a Disneyland. That wasn't. Like, you know, you can in California Adventure. So yeah, I guess it was. But then you heard the story of wasn't it a uh, Olympian? Not this past soccer, this World Cup, like two or was it two, one or two ago? Was she got kicked out of? Uh, yeah, Alex Morgan. I don't think we talked about that on another podcast. One yeah, she time. had gotten kicked out. So it's uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll admit, like when I went around the world. I got pretty toasty. Um, I am not one personally to really get like out of control when I get toasty. I'm more like, all right, like I had a couple laughs, get me home and get me to bed. Like, <laughs> but I know everyone's different when it comes to drinking alcohol. And honestly, after doing that in, a, in that particular short period of time, I don't think I would ever 
do it that way again because it wasn't really my, like I really didn't feel in hindsight that was like kind of the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but like you said, if you're gonna satisfy both, then is this a matter of do we start implementing um ways to let everyone do what they're gonna do, but kind of keep an eye on it in a sense? Like, do we have trained? In other words, you can go to a bar. Bartenders are most bartenders are generally trained there on the lookout. This guy's had too many. We're gonna stop him. Mm -hmm. The guy who's selling cotton candy off to the side. Oh, and by the way, a beer isn't gonna be so savvy when it comes to like yeah, trying to yeah, detect yeah. that. Yeah, to see the signs of should this person be cut off or not. I mean, yeah. So that's the thing. Maybe we should have more cast members in those general areas, especially around the world in Epcot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying like make it like a you know police state or something but i'm just saying just an, an eye like i'm like you i've never really seen anything too crazy i did notice the last couple of times i went i've noticed more and more groups doing it though yeah like, kind of giggling yeah like um, we saw a lot of um you see some language with, you, hear, you hear some language they sometimes. wear that you know they get the t-shirts you see the, i mean you can tell who it is they're wearing the t-shirts with drinking around the world or i know we've had a couple of times we've done it we have a little uh it's like a little passport and you kind of write what you do you yeah do. So, so you can there are a lot of people that like to go do the drink around the world thing you can tell who's doing it and who's not doing yeah. it so they should yeah they could maybe you know put more people to keep an eye on those people yeah and i think that like like you kind of the way you described you you did it and we might even do it maybe hopefully we, we get a chance to do it when we're down there but we'll do it oh um, kind of how I'm, about to, how I'm about to explain it, where you kind of stretch it. If you, I feel like you stretch it across a day, 11 to 9 or whatever it is, yeah. shouldn't really be a problem anyway. No, no, because that's, that, that's the way I, I've done it. Unless you're pounding. I mean, I mean, and that goes on, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, you know, I'm fine with, you know, you have a drink at every place. You, you know, you drink your waters and stuff in between to try to keep yourself hydrated and all that. You, you, you can accomplish it and not... What what is the park open? Ten, eleven to ten. I think, well, the usually. World Showcase is eleven, and I think it usually close right? nine ten. So you so you have that's ten, a little, say ten hours. That's minimum. a little over one drink an hour. It should. I mean, if you do it, unless you're going, you know, trying to squeeze it all in quick. Well, you, you I did, by the way, and not not the greatest. You will get drunk if you do that. Yes, yeah, so you should you. be. You should, most people should be able to hold it but yeah i know by the time i finished because we kind of did it i i don't do it the tr traditional way i like to jump around and kind of you know give myself time but uh, i ended the official end at at the rose and crown and you walk in that place and you might want to sit there and have a couple of drinks because that's more of a it's a bar that's a, that's a real yeah, it's bar. A bar it's, it's yeah. very nice it's my, yeah, it's my favorite bar. There, you know, place to get a drink there. Well, there's another thing. There's another thing. You know, you just kind of brought up without even thinking, without even, like, kind of inadvertently, is that um, you're seeing more and more bars pop up mm -hmm. too. Not just places to get a drink, but bars. Like you got the baseline now yep. in Hollywood Studios, uh, Rose and Crown's bar. Like you, you go into Mexico, they got a the Pomon Tequila bar. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, and I then mean, even the thing I noticed big at Disney Springs this year was like <clears throat> it's just the pop up beer carts. I don't think they're everywhere, and they're just you just. And I'm not complaining. I'm I'm, I'm no. all right with it as because I think I, I feel like I'm a responsible person that can handle that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And most people I know are, but it's like almost like. But people aren't. Some people aren't. No, because it's you get that almost little bit of like Las Vegas type feeling where you can walk in a store with a you can just walk. Yeah, it's nice. It's relaxing. It's a good feel. And it's, some people. I like that take advantage you know it's i can i it's here so i might as well just yeah. go crazy and i'm on vacation that's the other thing too is like you're in your vacation thing it's like i'm on vacation i'm gonna do what i normally don't do i heard this discussed on the podcast i was referring to earlier was this unplugged and i heard uh craig williams on there make the point that and I, this i didn't know this was a thing but i guess i'll take his word for it because he's you know he's there he's at the parks constantly People are getting, uh, like, literally tailgating in the parking lots now. He's saying he's seeing people walk in, like, tanking up in the parking lot. And, it, like, <laughs> if that's a... See, if that's a... See, the, I would say that they should... If that's a thing... Yeah, that... And I'll take his word for it, because I don't think he's lying by any stretch. 
then they ought to start patrolling the parking lots a little bit. That that should, I would say that you probably want to, you probably want to put the put the yeah. you know kibosh on that. And then you uh, <laughs> because I, that just seems to be a little bit silly. Cause I don't even know. I wasn't. Like, what I, are you tailgating for? Yeah. And not only that, but let's say you just have six or seven, and you catch a good buzz in the in the parking lot, walk in and jump on the tower, tower. Now you're just asking for like yeah. And then you, now you start to wonder like with, with that. Uh, well, obviously with this lady, um, it's, it's pretty obvious, but. With um, the lady that was recently punched the um, Tower Terror cast member because her fast pass wouldn't go through or anything. Mm -hmm. No idea if, if this is related or anything, but maybe she's had she had a few in her too. I don't know, but you have to start questioning that because mm -hmm. alcohol plus people that aren't good with alcohol and there's all kinds of varieties and everyone has a point they get to where I'm not trying to I'm not judging. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a point they get to when they're not good with alcohol. Um, Plus crowds, plus annoying lines, plus it's like a recipe for yeah people flipping out. <laughs> and then you're down there this, in the summertime too. You're down there in the heat, and it's like you have a nice cold drink, and maybe I'll have a couple, a few more because it's you know. And then then you set yourself up for dehydration and stuff, and you get yourself sick too. So you could it's just it depends on the scenario too, like. We're going, for example, in January, so it's going to be, like, we're bringing my daughter, but we have enough adults where, like, you and I might be able to get out to the parks alone for a day, or for you and Sarah, whatever the situation might be, where we might be apt to have a few more alcoholic beverages than we mm -hmm. might if we were just with our kids. Yeah. Um, I do think you have to be weary, or not weary, but um, conscious of the idea that when you step out of the baseline, or you step out of one of those places, you are going to be surrounded by a lot of families mm -hmm. and you should probably keep your boundaries in mind um but once again kind of it kind of sways off topic or it's on topic but off the point of what's disney going to do yeah to it, like to, to you can't trust people to do that on their own no. so what are they going to do are they going to start limiting drinks uh, at places? Well, that, that really wouldn't work around the world because the guy who's serving beer in Canada has no idea how many beers these people had mm -hmm. on their way up. And then another point that was brought up on the Diz that, I, that I'll steal from him was they, um, you might be completely fine. I might be half asleep on the bench. And you're going, oh, well, I'm going to get two beers so we can finish this mm -hmm. thing. And you're handing me a beer. Like, you know, you're, you're opening the bottom of my jaw and pulling the thing down. I, yeah. You know, it's uh because in all most it's, of, inter it's an interesting most of the time when we were in Epca, I would get a drink for me and Sarah, and there was only one. It was Italy was the only one that wouldn't allow me to get two drinks without two IDs. So they're not even like which is weird. That's not even uniform. Now. Yeah, so they're not even enforcing or whatever. It, or Italy said, was supposed was enforcing the right rule, and, no one and else nobody was. else was. So yeah. Well, who wants to deal with an angry guest, mm -hmm. too, right? So you're working. I mean, let's face it, we're a little older now. We're not looking. We're not looking like we don't. We're not old enough to buy booze. So we show up there, and they're thinking, "Why am I going to give this guy a hard time? He's probably grabbing one for his wife too, or mm -hmm. whatever." I'm not going to say no, or or they have said no in the past, and they just get you know people get mouthy back. Probably drunk people like we're talking about, yeah. and it just it like snowballs into this whole scenario where. I don't know what the, I, you know, it's just worth talking about. So I don't know the answer. I like alcohol. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with saying that. I like the idea of, I'm on vacation, I can yeah. have some alcohol. Yeah, especially on vacation. Um, but, you, yeah. there are children and families, and I haven't experienced this personally, but I've heard people saying a lot, a lot of bad language, a lot of just disruptions that ought not be there. Um, yeah, I think I think the family thing, just in general, might help it, because you only hear of a couple things, but maybe you know, you, if there wasn't, if it wasn't a family place, it would be more. You'd hear of more bad things, so maybe the the family aspect does help, somewhat. But then you still have those outliers. Well, it's I mean, because the thing is too with like, we're at the stage right now with Disney where. Um, we're in a generation where we grew up with the Disney Channel. We grew up with it even more so than generations before, even though it's been a, you know, mm -hmm. a pop culture icon for, you know, almost a hundred years. But the parks were pushed more towards us growing up, you know, kind of eyes and strategy. 
And it, it, whether we want to admit it or not, whether we realize it or not, that's embedded in us some way, somehow. So you're getting a lot more people that are just like two buddies being like, you know what, we'll go, we'll go to Disney for a week. We'll go to Epcot. Yeah. And, you know, and then, then you're going to bring Star Wars in. You're going to bring Pandora. And so you're bringing things that are more appealing to people in their 20s and 30s. Um, so you're getting those people that aren't even they are just you know the child is millennial that's um, showing up, and I don't want to say look in the party, but yeah, maybe, you know, maybe look in the party. Yeah, look, you, <laughs> you let loose a little bit, you know, yeah. And then you know we've all been there where you have three or four beers or whatever it is you're drinking, and uh, that was your goal. And then all of a sudden, you're, yeah, you're loose. Now you're like, well, maybe I'll have two or three more. Yeah. And lines are long, so you're not getting in them. So I'm talking about ride lines. So yeah. you just, now it's become, you know, the parks. I mean, you can, we talked about this before. You can stroll in Epcot for hours and just be amused. You don't even need to do anything. Yeah, right. Have a beer in your hand. I don't know. Oh, but I mean, um, they could, I mean, the, the prices are already high enough, but they could raise prices. Oh, please don't. Shh. I'm not giving them, but I'm just <laughs> trying to think of what they could do. Like, they listen but, to my screen idea, John. Please, yeah, yeah, they, that's yeah, right. They, they, uh, yeah. You're going to have a lot of comments, which would be good, I guess, but yeah. <laughs> how are you getting the beer prices raised? I had an idea um, I was thinking of, and that was, and, and, and while I'm at it, stumbled over my words here, I'll segue this kind of to the end of the podcast which is I'm going to bring back as our 50 tweaks for 50 years because we were supposed to bring that back at the end of August and we didn't. So this is going to be my first one. And I'm just a suggested tweet. Pick a park every night outside of regular extra magic hours or that you could do three extra hours and it's advertised as come eat and drink. Hmm. And... Maybe even, I mean, this is kind of a stretch, but maybe Epcot could could do that and not even, not even have the rides open. Just World Showcase is open with no rides. Come check it out. Extended festival time. Yeah. reason why I say that is because that will kind of keep the, the families a little uninterested and then maybe it's 9 to midnight. You know? Um, so there's more that can go on then. Isolate it a little bit. I mean, I don't know. Just an idea. Might work. Yeah. Might yeah. offer. You will, yeah, you definitely will deter the kids from being messy. I mean, you could argue. I mean, look, I don't know. The, I don't know the ins and outs of the business of Disney, of Disney's business, but uh, you could probably argue that if they did, if they kept Epcot open, let's say they do extra magic hours at Epcot like twice a week or whatever, right? So, those, so the other five days of the week. You, you close it at, at 9. When I say close it, I mean the rides, and you just do a three-hour every night of the at five nights of the week of just World Showcase, and there probably be plenty of people showing up just for that experience. Yeah, I mean, if they have, it just set up kind of alone, they have that. You can buy that after four annual pass yeah. for Epcot. So it's very... People like... People just, yeah, just go there to... And they would probably like to have families out of there. Yeah. The other way around, where they mm -hmm. could just kind of be more of like a bunch of people looking to have a good time. And that way they can kind of keep an eye on it better. And if people do get a little toasty, as long as they're not being completely ridiculous, you can kind of, mm -hmm. like a bar would do, just kind of regulate traffic or regulate, you know, just make sure nothing too crazy is going on. Although as a cast member, that's got to be a nightmare too. It's, there's just so many, like, things that, that come to mind as we talk about it. I'm at, like, alcohol always, is always going to bring on aggravation, especially on a grander scale. Like, for example, like if you go to an isolated place, like we go down the road right now to, to our local town bar, all right, they're going to have 20, 25 people on a, on a good night drinking there. Disney's going to have people bouncing around to, like, 25 various places within one park. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Yeah. But they've got to be making a killing on the booze. Oh, yeah. So that, you know yeah. that's not going anywhere. And like no. I said, if anything, it's going to it's gonna be more. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, you get Disney Springs a thing. Obviously, that, that's more where it belongs, um, or where it originally was thought to belong, and then the three parks, and then Magic Kingdom. <sighs> I don't know if they'll ever. I wonder if they'll ever go like outside vendor on Magic Kingdom. They'd, they'd be very careful with. That. Even I would have to admit that. Even I'm okay when I go to Magic King, Kingdom thinking to myself, I don't need to drink a beer here. This is, no. This is it just it doesn't even fit in the in the vibe of the of the place. No, because I don't think even sit down restaurants. I didn't. 
They have them now. So yeah, but yeah. I don't really think like we didn't even. I got one once. It wasn't really a thought because you're more of, especially Magic Kingdom, you're more focused on. Just yeah. It's, getting it's your a, stuff it's done. A kids' day. But. Kids' day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you want to do all your, yeah. It's, it's so much to do. And uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, let uh, you know we're looking for more comments. So. You guys must have opinions on this. Let us know um, what you think, and uh, maybe we can discuss it next episode. Because I think that um, it's definitely something that Disney needs to start like delving into and thinking about a little harder. Because they're obviously the booze isn't going anywhere. If anything, it's going to be more, and uh, they are not going to be. <laughs> it could get to a point where it's going to be very, very difficult to control. It probably already is, because um, obviously with these instances happening and all that kind of stuff yeah but at least they're far and few between that's that's the good thing so you don't hear it seems like it but one of the guys on the Diz on Plug today mentioned that he was a cast member for years and a, this happens a ton but they almost never let it get out they just kind of squash it and move on he's like he was actually surprised that they were this got out like as a, as a story yeah um but he thinks because it had more to do with, like, I guess a, a, a local deputy seen it, so there was no way Disney could kind of, like, keep it in-house, I guess. But, I don't know. Yeah, because, dude, well, she did, she did it out, was she outside the park? She was yeah, in the park, like, outside the gate, I outside, guess. Yeah. Look I mean, where the tabs go. So, I mean, there's, you know, it's crowds of people, eventually. Yeah, and I think the, sure. ca the cabin might have called a cop, too, or someone probably just did from their cell phone. I'm not sure, but I guess a deputy had seen her. So. Yeah, at least if it was inside the park, they can, can probably control it more once it gets out that gate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> unruly people with alcohol is, just is what it is. It's very difficult to control, and you just want to get somebody home and to sleep, and then, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, at that point, Disney so Disney certainly doesn't want to be pinning people down or carrying anybody out of a park in cuffs or any of that good stuff. Or bad stuff, you know. Anyway, comments below about ideas of how, how to stop this. I'm going to make it a Twitter poll as well. No, I had a thought. Oh? It does nothing to do with this. This just popped into my head last week, or the week before, with the whole Star Wars and Galaxy's Edge. Oh, um, okay. Now, my thought was, do you think that th when you go to Muppet's Courtyard, still have, you know, the fountain thing mm -hmm. Muppet, but that that gift shop is virtually sells no muppet stuff <laughs> yep now my thought do you think that they would eventually try to put star tours where muppet vision is because i mean i looked at like the google map of it it's not the same size so they'd have to add to it but it gives you that option of keeping star tours outside of galaxy's edge but then it gives you the option of you land in batu and then you have the option to okay. physically go into galaxy's edge i don't think they would move it from building to building because from everything that i've seen on and like the ride system and all that stuff from star tours it doesn't seem like it would be practical for them because they hate spending the money on things and all this. But I do think they may just like eat up that area and theme it out to almost like a spaceport all the way into Batu. You know what I mean? So do like do something else with that yeah. building and I mean we I I like to answer this question when I get back because I've seen <laughs> videos but I want to see what it all looks like when I'm there. I know I know like you go into that tunnel and it brings you to Batu. So what I wonder about that is with the baseline tap house and all that like LA theme stuff over there. I'm not yeah. sure. That's the only thing that throws me off with that stuff. So like, yeah, it's just because they spent the money to do that, but then like they're so like not doing anything with Muppets. I think we're gonna lose Star Tours when everything settles down. And they're able to do it. It's, it's kind of like I know you don't want to hear that, but I think it's like and I don't either. But I think that's what they're gonna do. Because it seems like they're focusing. Because I thought they'd just get rid of Launch Bay, but it seems like they're kind of focusing the more of the classic more, more like you know not yeah not, not the now not the star wars yeah, the, the old star and the wars. emergent it's not non kind of yeah. almost like non-emergent stuff although star wars is pretty immersive and i feel like you could like loop that into a trip to batu yeah and it'd be cool the only thing is, 
I don't know. It's just weird how. I know what you're saying, and I it's completely from understand. It. Like, I get it. But I don't but I know. Just, the, I think because it's a theater, you know, Mop Provisions the theater, so they have some room. It might, not, but I, I don't, I don't know. If, like you said, with the spending of the money of doing that, but it's just a thought I had. No, I, I get it. Just because how I noticed I, that I was... gift shop had, I mean, it's they had some Muppet Baby stuff, and that was about it. Because <laughs> that's the big show they have on now. But I, I wonder if like, you know, what I love to see them do. What Muppet Vision is they're going to put the Muppet Show on, this new Muppet Show they got on Disney+. Plus. Let's just make the assumption that, that it, it's like the old school one and everyone loves it. Th then maybe you can make a recreation of the Muppet Show in Muppet Vision. Yeah. Like you got the balcony already up there, but they don't have like the other set pieces. Maybe, maybe even like a live variety show up there would be cool instead of a screen. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I... Like, the kind of live like the, thing at Liberty Square is pretty cool. That's what I mean. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's neat. Or it completely goes away. I don't yeah. know. Or they completely demolish everything over there at some point and just use that part of the, of the park for something else. I don't. I don't think they would get. I don't think they would make an expansion of Galaxy's Edge that, out that way because I think the tunnel is where they want it to like cut off. Mm -hmm. And I think they do have an expansion pad going back somewhere over there. Um. I don't know. And it's funny too because like. And now, you know, we, we, we try to cap these around 35 minutes. So we got to be careful with time. <laughs> but um, it's it's always, it's always worth talking about this, too. It's um, this Galaxy's Edge doesn't seem like it was as popular as I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's, 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 it's popular, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I thought it was going to be, like, way crazier. I mean, it was crazy that first day. So was Pandora, though. Yeah. So was Cars Land. But now, you see, like, Flight of Passage is still pretty crazy. And then the other day, it was... Slinky Dog was a longer wait than Smuggler's Run. I don't know if people are still waiting because they know the second ride's opening up in December, so they kind of pushed their vacations off. But I, I, I don't... I wonder. That That's 100% definitely could be it. Knock on wood, they don't do that until after we get there because if the crowds are the way they are lately, when we get there, we're going to have a nice trip. <laughs> but anyway... Um... The more I think about it now, and the more I've watched a couple of things on YouTube with non-Disney fans, just, just like the Star Wars fans, talk, like there's a couple of channels that I, I don't really follow, but I've seen pop up, so I've watched the videos, kind of getting it from like a raw, like kind of guy who reads the books and does all, like, really mm -hmm. geeks out about Star Wars. They're not that interested in it. A lot of them don't like what Disney's done with Star mm -hmm. Wars, so it's not original trilogy stuff. They're not really that excited about it so those i wonder if those fans are kind of like bleh so unless you're like kind of like us where you're the disney fan and the star wars fan you just kind of whatever about it yeah um or like you said it's just the dust is going to settle at some point it's going to slam i don't know and unless they're the, i don't know, know if that's going to happen though. it had like the it kind of had like that disneyland when it opened like the, the rest of i mean galaxy's edge was busy but the rest of the park was empty but it's like i don't know if people are waiting but then the second one's the ride's opening up in December, and that's December's usually busy with the Christmas parties and the Christmas, and so so you might not you're not gonna get the full. You're not gonna see the what the real thing is until next year probably. I don't know. But then I don't know since we'll, like when we're going, it'll be marathon weekend. That's usually a busy weekend too. So you, I don't know. I don't know either. But it was just weird seeing you go on the app and check, and it's like, oh, it's only a 35, 40 minute wait for yeah, that. Yeah, you can get right in. Yeah. I was like, in my mind, you know, and I did a podcast about it way back when on a Galaxy's Edge of Madness, I called it. I thought it was going to be like you were going to be waiting just to get into the land yeah. for like months. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's, that's what I was nervous because I was already, when we made the reservation and everything, it was like, well, am I even going to be able to get in? Will my reservation get me in? But I don't, I don't have to worry about it now. I'm just right I walking. Fully, I, I fully plan on, like, I don't know what, how we're going to play yet, but I'm guessing we might take advantage of the 6 a.m. time slot. Yeah, if they still, yeah, if they still uh, Assuming maybe, they still doing maybe it. Maybe they won't even need to do it anymore. Well, they might not, but if they are, we're going to probably do that. And I think if we do, we'll walk, we'll be right in, no yeah. problem. And then we can do all our appointments, probably hang out there for six hours, and no one's going to bother us. <laughs> That's the vibe I'm getting That's right now. That's what it seems like it is, yeah. Um, well, we may have to wait a little bit of time to get on, like, if Rise of the Resistance is as good as it is, they say it's going to be, 
then um, it doesn't matter. That's just going to be like flooded passage where people aren't going to care what, what it is. They just want to see yeah. it. So there'll be a wait time for that. But I'm, I'm honestly, in my mind, fully prepared to wait two to three hours for that if I have to. I'm not, I'm not going down there, not going on that. Um, yeah, not me. Yeah, yeah. Not from what they're showing. looks insane. And once again, going back to the drinking, we can always just grab a beer and stand there and wait. So, yeah, whatever. Anyway, that is a good. That is a good, uh, interesting point, though. I don't, it's hard to envision like that stuff hanging around there. Like Pizza Rizzo's done. I mean, that's just a crowd yeah. gobbler. When 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 the season's peaked, and it barely ever opens. I don't even know why they wait. I don't even know what they were thinking when they decided to retheme that. Um, and then. <sighs> Public Vision is so out of place. I guess you could just keep that a theater and, and make any kind of show there, really, if you wanted to. Although I heard they might be, I heard they might be doing a refurb on that Mother Vision too at some point. I don't know how accurate that is. It's rumors. I think um, they're they're very hesitant to touch it because it was the last thing Jim Henson yeah. did. Yeah. But. But I mean, that, I mean, come on. Yeah. I agree, but. And then uh, I mean, I, I get it, but I don't know. And then like Star Tours is so off the beaten path, but too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just. Uh, and unless you're gonna really engulf that land and connect it all, then it's just never really gonna make sense. Mm-hmm. It's like so you land in, like, because there's scenes where you land in Batu. Mm-hmm. So you land yeah. in Batu and you walk out. You're not in Batu and you gotta walk over to get the Batu. Yeah. I mean, if you're going for a merge, that doesn't quite cut it. No, not at all. But uh, anyway, we'll end it here. <laughs> um, next week, podcast. I'm gonna throw it out there right now. So I want to talk about. The Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser experience, and uh, some theories on what how we think it's gonna work and um, whether or not we think it's worth it. Um, spoiler alert: I'm gonna do it one way or the other, whether I think it's not or is or not. Um, and you know, we'll do another tweak. So we'll talk to you guys next week. Um, stay tuned for our new intro. Which I have now had my hands on, just waiting for some uh, intro music to come in that I um, had been work- had someone working on, and uh, get a little new look there. And I keep promising Johnny's cooking show, which I we will get to, but it's my fault. I've been working on crazy, and I have not been able to get any time to do it. We will start doing it once we get those rolling. The work starts to slow down, then we'll we'll, we'll roll them out. Um, and a couple new videos on the way. I actually got. Johnny's wife working on a few scripts for me as, as well, and uh, one I'm working on. So hopefully when those get rolling, we'll be able to roll out three or four. I'm hoping to do five or six a season and then kind of take time off like I did this past year where I did like five and then took a few months off and, you know, so I'm not rolling, you know, I'm not going to be able to roll them out every week, but we'll have them and, on, and um, try to keep them on current topics as well as, you know, historical uh, things here and there as well. Anyway, I ranted enough, um, or babbled enough, so we'll see you next week, and uh, have a magical rest of your week.